Hi, this is Angela White, and I am on the Actors Lounge. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Actors Lounge. Today, I'm happy to have with us an actual repeat guest. I'm so honored to have film producer Miss Angela White. Hi, Angela. How's it going? Hey, now all is well. Thank you for having me back. Of course, I'm so happy to have you here. I mean, your interview was like a favorite of mine. I mean, and I got so much great response and feedback from the first interview that I went um, when you were on the show the first time I mean it was such a powerful interview and I got so much great feedback so thank you so much I'm honored to have you back oh you're very welcome I'm glad uh, it blessed somebody's life that's that's always good and good to know mm-hmm. but thank you thank you for having me very grateful yes yeah, so I'm excited for you and I'm excited to talk about your film a question of faith that's getting its television world premiere on Lifetime on Easter Sunday, April 12th. I think that is very exciting, and I think the timing of it, of the um, television release, couldn't be better. So can you tell us about the film and just, just yeah, just give us a little bit about the film and what it's about? Yes, I, it's like my baby, this film. So it's called, like you said, A Question of Faith. It stars King Fields. Richard T. Jones, C. Thomas Howell, Renee O'Connor, Greg Allen Williams, T.C. Stallings, and Jackie Velasquez. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful film that crosses over all demographics, race, and age. Basically, we tell the story of three different fil- families, one African-American, one white, and one Latino. Uh, basically, how they all three lo- temporarily lose their faith in God due to a tragic incident. So basically, something tragic happens in the first 15 minutes that affects all three of these families unknowingly. They don't know they're connected. And we see their journey go through a process of doubt. Uh, Is God real? Is God in my life? Why me? And, you know, really is important to what we're going through right now with the coronavirus. There's so many parallels Mm -hmm. where people are losing their jobs, where people have lost hope, where people's family members have passed away or they're very sick or they don't know where they're getting their next meal from. We have a similar situation in the question of faith, not like that with a virus, but where something happens and they don't understand why me, why. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate question answer in the film is God's in control. Everything happens for a reason. There's a reason in God's plan and his timing on why things happen. Even right now, right. there's things happening for a reason. So a question of faith basically asks the question, do you really have faith in God? Mm-hmm. Do you question him or do you trust his word? And we give you the answer at the very end. But it's a beautiful film, great music. Uh, the music is a whole other separate piece of it. And we mm-hmm. try to give you hope and inspiration that no matter what you're going through, you can overcome. Mm, and it's such a powerful film. Um, I had seen the film prior, but I actually just recently watched it again. And it is just such. Oh, like, thank you. You're welcome. There's so many emotions that you go through, like with the characters. Um, just like you said, from the start, within the first 15 minutes, you feel so invested and you go on the emotional roller coaster with the um, characters and I think what's really what I really appreciated about the film was the fact that the the pastor played by Richard T. Jones you see him questioning in his faith you know and I felt like that was really big because it's usually the pastor is the one giving the encouragement and getting people through but it shows the like human element of the pastor and I really appreciate that because it's such a they always say like oh the pastor is praying for everybody but who's praying for the pastor you know yeah yeah so I I really appreciated that and it was just a well done film so emotional so touching and it just make it just made me oh, think about you. a lot of things so it was well done Thank you. And, you know, Lifetime, when it airs, it will be an edited version for TV. Mm-hmm. When it came out in theaters and it was also on Netflix, they were able to see the full version. But they still will get the impact, even though we did have to edit it a little bit differently for mm-hmm. TV. Okay. And I hope people will walk away with it knowing that everybody can question God, including a pastor. Yeah. And that's why it was important that Richard T. Jones, who was our tour guide throughout the movie, he questioned his faith. Very important that we started with him. Yeah. Definitely. Now, I know you said this film is your baby, but why was this film important for you personally? And what was your um, experience producing this film? Yeah, this film was almost like a coming out party for me. Mm. Uh, the film was produced by my production company, Silver Learning Entertainment. Uh, I actually raised all the funding. We shot in Atlanta, Georgia. And prior to that, 
I always had partners. I always had other people that I was in partnership with. I was doing a lot of other people's content, as we all do when we work for hire. Uh, so I think the, this was more like the first time I could pick the content, mm. pick the writer, the director, uh, pick the cast. And so I was able to show the world if I had my own, uh, say, catalog, this is what it would look like. Now, I watched an interview where you were saying that, you know, prior to doing the film, people were telling you, like, you have to be careful doing face-based films. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to get boxed in. And, you know, you said God really ordered your steps and so many opportunities came from that project. What was the response after the success of the film? Like, you know, what were people in the industry saying or, or what those people that were invi- advising you not to take that route? Like, what what did you hear? Yeah, there was definitely a lot of people who were giving me their wisdom and cautionary tales. Mm. Just be careful not to be boxed in. And there is truth to that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be boxed in and to the point where people think you can't do other type of content. Mm -hmm. Uh, Up until I did Question of Faith, I already had another faith piece film. People just didn't realize that. I did a film for BT called Who Can I Run To? And I starred Tasha Page Lockhart, Bishop Marvin Sapp, Mm -hmm. Jessica Reedy, Little Mo. And that was an amazing musical type film that premiered in 2013 on BET. So people just didn't realize I've already done a faith base. I do everything. And so I think that was the concern, like who would hire me afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there's truth to that because I didn't do a film the next year. Uh, So there was a a lull, Mm -hmm. to be honest, career-wise, where people just thought, oh, you're a faith-based producer, not realizing I've already done like 25 films. Mm -hmm. And only one of them was Mm -hmm. (laughs) faith-based. Not understanding I've done horror, thrillers, drama. I'm known for romantic comedies and thrillers, if anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think what happened, this film had more success than the other Mm film. So people thought or assumed this is the lane I want to go into. Since then, I haven't even done faith-based again, which I do want to. It's just harder to get some finance. It's Mm -hmm. harder to get the support. I'm hoping after this coronavirus that Mm -hmm. people now will look for more faith-based and inspirational films. But they're very hard to get made. Mm. A lot of studios do not have a faith-based division. Mm. There's only about three studios that do. And the ones that don't have a division for it, they don't like the term, so they prefer inspirational. Mm. Uh, you got to be very careful. They're, they're hard to do, and they like them based off books. So they're not easy to get them going. And then um, they're not easy to get to, for people to uh, get cast in them as well because there are a lot of actors that won't do faith-based. So there's a lot of challenges with uh, faith-based. I do have another one ready to go, but I haven't been able to completely secure everything that I need mm-hmm. for the film. So since then, I've done uh, gone back to stand-up comedy, which is, is my natural roots, and I've done a TV series, and I've done a comedy TV series called Pump, just wrapped the last tonight last tonight with Damon Williams, and I was just shooting another comedic series in the middle of this virus that stopped. Mm. So uh, you kind of go, the industry kind of leads you on content, and I'm hoping the content will change so I can, I'm able to have my faith-based film that I do have ready to go, yeah. uh, finance or and distribute it, but they are much more difficult. Now, you mentioned actors, like, kind of shy away from faith-based films. Is it because of the same reason, like, they don't want to get boxed in? Like, what is the reason behind that? Yeah, a lot of it definitely is they want to get boxed in, and people don't really want to uh, put their faith out there. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to religion and politics, those are two places that people are very particular about. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, people who do faith-based movies are part of whatever that religion is, Mm -hmm. right? And so if they do something that's not a part of their normal faith, it gets a little strange for them. Mm, Okay. Okay, that makes sense. There's a, there's a fine line. Yeah. And then they don't want people to see them as a part of that religion mm. uh, if they're opposite religion. They want to kind of stay in a neutral lane. So it's a little tricky. And they're advised by their advisors not to touch faith based. You know, if it's inspiration, mm. like Sandra Bullock did The Blind Side, people can get with that. Okay. When you start having Christ, Jesus, mm. uh, take uh, Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you start getting into these detailed nooks and cranny, like a question of faith did, mm. that's something different. Wow. Now we're telling people to take Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That's a message, and some people want to stay away from that. Mm. Interesting. I didn't even think about it like that, but you breaking it down, I guess I can understand. I can see the, the thought process behind that. Very much so. It's very hard to to um, 
fake a faith based movie too. So a lot of times you do want your lead characters to probably be of that faith. Mm. It's easier for them to, to play it. Okay, okay. Now, um, the cast of the film, you know, you named some of the names, um, Kim Fields, Richard T. Jones, T.C. Stallings, yeah. C. Thomas Howell. What, what was the energy and the vibe like on set? The energy was really good. I've worked with everybody but Kim Fields. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, I never worked with Kim Fields, Renee O'Connor, or Jackie Velasquez. Okay. But the vibe was great. I just worked with Greg Allen Williams and C. Thomas Howe in a film called The Sincere, which was a thriller that starred Isaiah Washington. So we just finished that. Mm-hmm. So we already had a great relationship. I worked with Richard T. Jones on The Last Letter that starred Omari Harwick, which is another thriller because I do a lot of thrillers. Mm-hmm. And so we already had a relationship. Kim Fields was new, Renee O'Connor, and Jackie. But everybody came to set with positive vibes. There's no negative energy. It's not that type of film. Yeah. Not the type of film for that. Yeah. Not with the cast. Right. Crew, that's something different. You always have your uh, hiccups for crew. Mm -hmm. But with the cast, everybody came ready to work every single day. Mm, That's beautiful. And I mean, it's such a, like you said, the content, you know, and there were so many heavy scenes. Like, I can only imagine the emotion that it took filming those scenes, like in the hospital room or just, you know, the the sun being hit. Like, there's just so many things that really have to, you have to like pull out of you as an actor. So I'm sure it was like emotionally heavy on on the set as well. Yes, yes. And um yeah, it was heavy and mm. and but there everybody was a trained actor for the most part, so they were ready to go. Yeah. That's awesome. We were ready to get right into it. We shot it in fifteen days in Atlanta, wow. Georgia. So there was no time to be, there was no time to play. Wow, yeah. And the music was amazing. I was enjoying the music so much. It was great. Thank you. Yeah. I hope people buy the soundtrack after seeing it next oh, yeah. week. Yeah, absolutely. Um so one question I did want to ask in pertain to the movie. Um, la- I think it was last week you went live and on Instagram and you talked about um, the distribution run of a film and how it has its theater run and then it has its TV run. <clears throat> Can you explain that, that process a little bit for people that may not know how that works? Well, every film is different and everybody has their own, we call a uh, campaign <clears throat> or run of their film. So some people, when they do a film, they already know it's only going straight to DVD. That's mm-hmm. it. That's where their life of their film will live. Other people do a film, they expect it to go to DVD, which means home distribution, uh, and then they want, might want to go to streaming, which is streaming video on demand. Uh, that's like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, for example. And then other people, you want to you wanna try to exploit it in every possible ancillary market. So now you might do home, of course. You're going to do your SVOD, but then you're going to add television on top of that, broadcast rights. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add also your foreign rights, and then you're going to also want it in theaters, theatrical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have all these places that you can license your content. It's all about the strategy that you set up. And you have to know your strategy before you shoot. Mm -hmm. You have to know your strategy before you get financing. You have to know your strategy before you even start. Uh, you can't really go to a science theater, for example, and you don't know where your film's going to go, the, how they're going to receive the return of their money. So you, even though you can't guarantee them the return of their money, you still have to be able to project mm-hmm. where's my film going to go, and we call that the waterfall. So where's my film going to go? Okay, if I want $500,000, how am I getting the $500,000 back plus interest? Mm-hmm. Now you show how you're getting it back. You're expecting it from this market, this market, and that, and that's how you start understanding your distribution play. Now, a lot of times people will project things and they don't work out the way they expect. Uh, the market changes, things happen, and it happens for everybody, including me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you try to do your best, and a lot of people will hire a sales agent, and their job is to sell the project. Their job is to really exploit it as much as possible, whether it's in foreign territories, having it in different countries, whether it's also selling it here domestically, uh, whether it's helping with even setting it up in fears. So you have a lot of different players that mm-hmm. play a role in the potential success of your film. That's very interesting. When you were talking about it last week, I was just like, wow, that's so interesting. Like, you don't necessarily think about all the channels that it goes through and like what happens before the whole process of even like shooting a film. There's so much that goes into it. And um, I wanted to talk about your school that you offer because you're so knowledgeable and you've been in the business for so many years and you have so much to offer and give back. And you have a school 
called Backstage Pass to the movie industry, and you offer a ton of classes and resources to people who want to be a part of the entertainment industry. So can you tell us what is offered at your school and what students can expect to get from your, your school? Yes, I started in May of 2018, so we're coming upon our two-year anniversary. It's called Backstage Pass, like you said, to the movie industry. Uh, they can find it at my website, www.missangelawhite.com. It's an online educational platform. Uh, it's available to anybody in any part of the world. We did that intentionally so doors are accessible to everybody. We started it because there's so many people who do not live in a major city mm -hmm. that needs the educational instruction. And one of the things I focus on, though, is the business of entertainment. We don't focus so much on the craft of it. Uh, we focus on the business because that's where we find where students fail. Mm -hmm. Not that they're not talented singers or actors or writers producers or directors or overall content creators, they just don't know anything about the industry they're trying to enter. Mm -hmm. So we offer all kinds of different instructional teaching for that. So one thing we do, which is very successful, is the monthly group coaching. As a group, we have guest speakers twice a month, and we talk about the topics they, that they're discussing, they're educating the students on. We'll do just me, where I'll do uh, a bunch of different topics I want people to work on to become successful, like making sure their website's right, making mm -hmm. sure their demo reel's right, making sure that the proper headshots, what's the difference of a bio versus a resume, really teaching the importance of what they need to have. We also traveled together. Our first field trip last year was in Miami at the American Black Film Festival. Mm -hmm. We just came back from Sundance this past January. Mm -hmm. So the importance of us traveling together were part of the monthly group coaching. And so they can actually see some of the things I've already talked about in actual practice. So what does that mean? If I talk to you about how to network, now we're going to put it in practice when we go to this film festival. I want you to meet five casting directors. Or I want you to put a list together of who you want to meet. And I expect mm -hmm. you to meet them. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you to actually understand by uh, going to these seminars they have at these film festivals, how to pitch your content. Or I want you to meet executives. I want you to really try to make things happen for your life. So that's been awesome. We were mm -hmm. supposed to go to ABFF this coming June, but that's been pushed now to October because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. We also travel when we do Producers Boot Camp. So Producers Boot Camp is one of the courses I teach where you have to actually produce a project with me. Mm -hmm. We did two short films last year, one called Transgress, one called Hands Up. Transgress was shot in L.A., Hands Up was shot in Orlando, to Georgia. So now it's another experience for the students. They can actually be on set and receive a credit. Mm. It's an easy way to jumpstart their career mm. and become credible in the industry. So we offer so many things from one-on-one, -on -one, boot camp for actors. Uh, we have a demo reel course. If so many actors don't have demo reels mm. or even directors or producers. Uh, we also offer uh, some business teaching, uh, more so like how to write an e-book just so people can learn ways to increase their income. Mm. Uh, we're adding some more things to the school because of the economics that's happening right now, other ways they can make income while they work on their craft. Yeah. Wow. We also have a mentorship program mm -hmm. where we had students on the set of Ambitions last year uh, where they actually receive practical experience. They want to be a director. One of our former guest speakers, Simon Davis, is a director on a TV show, so he let some students shadow him for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we also pair people up with actors on set. So the mentorship program is amazing, too, where we, we do the work of pairing you with somebody, and then you get real experience watching them. Mm. So, yeah, I love the school. It's growing. Uh, we need to still spread the word about it. I think a lot more people need to be in it. Mm. No matter who I talk to who wants to be in the industry, they never, to me, and I say really never, they really never know the whole business. They know pieces of it, but they don't really understand a lot of it. You know, I did a call last night. I had over 80 people on the call, and you know, people really didn't even understand the difference of an agent and manager. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some real basics, and I say they're basics, but they really are basics that people don't understand. So how can you look for an agent if you don't really understand what they do? Mm -hmm. How can you make sure you have the right manager if you don't know what they're supposed to do? So um, you know, this is some serious uh, stuff uh, mm -hmm. to me. I say it's serious because... So many people die in their career, you know, famous people like a Sammy Davis Jr. or somebody like that, right? So many people that happens to, and people wonder, how did this great entertainer pass away with nothing? Mm. Because they didn't know the business. Wow. 
Uh, and so that is where we need to be in, in the 21st century. We should not be still trying to figure out uh, what our lawyers just gave us to sign. You need to know what your lawyer is giving you to sign because then you need to know if it's right or wrong or I don't want that type of deal. Mm-hmm. You have to become the brand and the product. And being the brand and the product, you have to be knowledgeable about it. And that's what my school teaches. That's awesome. Oh, that's incredible. I feel like I don't know anything, any school or class that offers that much information to students. I mean, and to be able to get all the different aspects, like producing, directing, acting, like all of it, you can really, even if you're not a director, but knowing, you know, the behind the scenes of directing or producing, I mean, that that's, that's priceless. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it is. Um, it's it's a great opportunity for me to pay it forward. Yeah. People have taught me. The person who uh, did my first producing job 20 years ago, she surprised me last night. And at the two-hour call, she just jumped on the call. Mm-hmm. And that really surprised me. And I already talked to people about her. So that was great that the person I talked about happened, and I had no idea, happened to come on the call to surprise me. And then she was able to give all her wisdom of words uh, being a producer for so long mm-hmm. uh, for a good half an hour last night. So that was a good shock. Um to have that. But yeah, it's a, forward, it's a way of paying it forward and teach people help you and then you teach other people. So it's, um, we make it affordable. We mm-hmm. do charge. It's not okay. free. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we do charge is because we have to run it. So like our monthly group coaching is 20 a month. You know, mm-hmm. so we try to keep everything affordable. Okay. But there's a process. It does take, it's not a non-profit. Um, a non-pro- I do have a non-profit that's totally different. But this is really for people who want to invest into their career. Mm-hmm. Uh, we explain strongly why you need to invest in your career. And if you don't invest into your career, you're in trouble anyway, whether that means investing in the right for tackle for her, whether it's investing in getting a coach, acting coach you might need, whether it's investing in getting a script doctor, if you're a writer, you know, you have to invest in your career. And so that's why we charge and we have cost, you know, to run the school. So mm-hmm. we do want it to grow. We do want to get to the point where we can have conferences and retreats Mm -hmm. where we can pay for people to come and be guests. So we want it to grow. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're constantly giving back and providing resources and information to people. You also have a book coming out, um, which I think is great. It's called The Secret to Creating a Winning Demo Reel. And you're having pre-orders right now all the way up to April 14th, pre-order for $10. And then the book is actually released on April 15th. So can you talk a little bit about the book and why it's important for people to pick up this book? Yeah, so I have already a course called Learn How to Create a Winning Demo Reel. Mm -hmm. And so what I ended up doing was putting together a book on it that was affordable Mm -hmm. because the average actor I come across doesn't have a demo reel, Mm -hmm. or if they do, they don't understand the rules. Mm-hmm. So, so let me put something that's quick and easy, an ebook, and I do have a paperback version, which is different, but an ebook that where they can just download it and at least have the demo reel. People don't understand the importance of the demo reel. They don't understand that casting directors have to have a system to weed people out. Mm-hmm. And one of the easiest ways, if you're on actor's access, to be weeded out is not to have a demo reel. Mm-hmm. They want to look at you. There's filters. People don't understand it. filters on one side. You can filter out. Everybody doesn't have a demo reel. Now you don't have to look at them. Okay. Then you have the group that does have a demo reel, but their clips might not be organized in a certain way. They might not be labeled in a certain way. Okay, now I can filter out that group too. Mm. And now you're getting down to your group that has their stuff together. And it doesn't mean they're the best actor. They just have their stuff together. And a lot of people don't understand that that talent is not what drives you being successful. It's how smart you are in the business of what drives you to be successful. Every major superstar will say, hey, I know there's a better singer than me. You know, Beyonce will say, I know there's better singers all over the place than me, probably. There's better actors than uh, Denzel or Viola Davis, all these other people. And that's just being real. There's always very talented people. But there's something that they did differently in their journey to get there that stopped them, basically. Mm. Uh, The difference is Beyonce's a very smart businesswoman. Uh, more so than a singer. You know, people have to recognize the difference. You know, our husband, Jay-Z, is now about to be a billionaire, very smart businessman versus just being a rapper. You know, mm-hmm. people have to think past it. Even Tyler Perry, you know, is a very smart businessman versus being a writer, producer, and director. It's just the truth. He's very smart. Mm-hmm. And so that's where people have to understand the difference between the people that make it and the people that don't. Mm. 
That's so amazing. I mean, it's just, it's so true. Like you said, the business. And that's why I think your school is very important um, to sign up for. I'm going to sign up for your school. Like just hearing you talk oh, about thank it. You. You're welcome. Like I, I mean, I definitely need a lot of the things you're talking about. And when I see, I want to talk about your social media because you're very like open and transparent and active on social media. And it's so great because every time I see you or a post or something, you, you make me feel like, oh, I need to get on it. Like, so, and that is good because it's like, you're putting a fire in all of us to like get our stuff together and be on top of it. So I just want to say thank you for all that you do, oh, you're all, welcome. all that you're doing. Like, I really admire you and I appreciate you. Um, can you well, tell, thank you, no. you're welcome. Can you tell listeners where they can keep up with you on social media or, you know, get in contact with you? Yes. Everywhere. I am Miss MS Angela White. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest. My website is still Miss MS Angela White. And that's branding, guys. You know, uh, you should not be giving out four or five different mm-hmm. ways for people to contact you. My email is info at Miss Angela White. Now, everything's consistent. If you put in Miss MS Angela White, everything comes up, even on Google. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's very easy to find me. I don't have to tell people five different things. And, and again, that goes into branding, which will be my next book that will come out in probably three months, mm-hmm. is how to brand yourself and market yourself. So, yeah, you can find me everywhere under Miss M.S. Angela White, including my website. Uh, it's very easy, very simple. And my tidbit to everybody entertainment business, it should be very easy to find you. Mm-hmm. You should not have to look through... Uh, four or five different pages and try to figure out who the person is, what's their real name, and, uh, oh, I can't find their website, or the IMDb goes in the Mac. I mean, it's just, it's just chaos out there with some people. And, again, that's what the school does. We try to clean it up. It's hard sometimes because people do have nicknames. And people do have uh, more going on in their company name versus their personal name. So it's a little crazy, mm-hmm. but it can be fixed. And the reason why it's important for it to be fixed is because it's easier for people to find you and be a brand. We'll go back to Beyonce. Beyonce's one name. It's easy. Uh, we don't have to worry about looking for uh, this or that. You want to make it easy for people to find you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, my final question before we get out of here and wrap this interview, I want it's not a question really. I just want you to talk to the actors and let them know, like, why right now the time that we're in is so critical because you talked about this on your live uh, last week this is the live I tuned into you did it it was like over two hours I came in on I think it was like the second hour and you were just talking about the timing right now how it's so important to be focused and not be caught up on you know just binge watching shows and this and that and you talked about like the importance of taking advantage of this time so can you just talk about that give a little advice to our actors listening no, absolutely. This is definitely a season for opportunity, even as depressing as it might look. And that's mm-hmm. deceiving. In every major crisis in this country, if you go back even historically, even the Great Depression, that's where most millionaires were birthed. Uh, anything, you look, you can look back that in a time of crisis, there's an opportunity. So there's an opportunity for actors, too. Mm -hmm. So what we have going on right now is the entertainment business technically is shut down, except for post-production. There are editors working, there are sound people working, because right now there's a lack of content. Mm -hmm. So people are working around the clock to get content to people's homes. So what that does is we had to halt the entertainment business for actors. So all the pilots for this year have been halted. Uh, some will come back when this is over and be mid-season replacements. Some won't. So now when we come back, all the production companies have to jump start what they were already shooting. Mm-hmm. Some will, some won't. That could be pilots. That could be films. It could be regular TV series, continuing episodes, right? So they'll be looking for actors because they will lose some actors mm-hmm. because some actors will have commitments and be in first priority positions with other networks and studios. So there'll be a chance that there'll be a lot of recasting. Now, that's just for what was already in progress. Mm -hmm. But then what you have, every single month, every production company has a slate of projects, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have month of April, there are projects slated. What happens to those? Now, those will go up into production. Mm -hmm. If we go through this through the month of May, which I know I'm in California, I'm pretty positive we will not be working in May. So now May, there were projects slated. Mm -hmm. What happens to those? Now, those are going to go up. 
Mm-hmm. Now, if we are off of this at June 1st, uh, now what starts June 1st? June 1st is when TV starts, where the writers go back into work and the actors start coming back in in July. So now you have this backlog of projects that will all go up and running at the very same time. Mm-hmm. So there will be more opportunities for actors than ever to have a potential to be cast in something really good. Mm -hmm. It's going to be probably more productions than we've ever seen in our lifetime going up at the same time. I expect breakdown services is going to be overwhelmed with production. Uh, I know for me, I was in the middle of shooting a TV series and we will go back up running first, but then I also had a movie slated in April. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. It's just going to be chaos for at least a month of figuring this out. But the good thing for actors, there should be more work than ever. People recasting projects because they lost an actor and then all these new projects. And then what the streaming platforms and networks have realized is not enough content. So right now people are scrambling to find content. Netflix has uh, basically everybody's playing. They've seen everything Netflix has. That's mm-hmm. new. Mm-hmm. So now they're prior even to like, wow, you know, we didn't think we needed this much content where people would be watching it. So what actors should be doing right now is preparing for when this ends. Now, what does that mean? That means everything that you claim you didn't have time to do, you have time to do. That means I should not see an actor in June or July that does not have their complete package Mm -hmm. ready to go. Mm -hmm. If you still don't have basic, like a website, these are basics, website, bio, resume your headshots and your demo reel Mm. that's on you Mm. at this point because now you have time to do everything there's no excuse Mm -hmm. you have time to work on your craft you have time to take some acting classes online people Mm -hmm. are offering amazing stuff a lot of them are free you know virtual online classes you have time right now to network with casting directors producers writers and directors because everybody's home Mm. you have time to put yourself in a better position than ever so when this is over you're ready to go. You're ready to submit yourself or you're ready to see if an agent will look at you or a new manager. Uh, you have had time to write out your introduction letters or cover letters, as we call them. You have time to write out thank you notes. You have time. I told my group last night, you have time to start scheduling Zoom lunch meetings. I know somebody mm. that just emailed me this morning for a Zoom lunch meeting. You have time to really be strategic right now to understand where you want to go with your career, Mm -hmm. research the TV shows, the movies, the genre you want to be in. Because remember, you have to know really your lane, your type. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I find a lot of people don't even know their lane. And what I mean by their lane, like are you a thriller person? Are you a comedic actress? Are you a drama? What are you? Mm -hmm. Uh, So you can really research. So utilize this time not to be sitting around watching movies just Mm -hmm. to be watching them. Watch them to study. Mm -hmm. Uh, Watch them also to, to learn and then in the meantime, prepare your business. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody's going to be looking for people when this is over who are not ready. Mm-hmm. Agents aren't going to be looking for people who are not ready. When this is over, everybody's going to want to get back to business and make what? Money. Right. The only way they can make money is if you are ready. If you're not ready, then they're going to go back to the same 10 actors, as a lot of them do, mm-hmm. who are ready. Mm-hmm. Nobody has time to develop you when this is over. Normally, people will spend time to develop you. They're not going to have time. They're going to be, it's like you owe rent for three months, right? Yes. When, when you owe rent for three months, you've got to catch up and pay. Now we've got to catch up and just put in actors who are trained, seasoned, ready to go. I don't have time for somebody that might need to do five takes. No, we need somebody who can do two takes at this point. That's what we need because we have to move faster. And you're going to see that production is going to be moving fast. There, I expect when, we, when this is over, I'm only going to have a week of prep. I expect already that I'm, as a producer, I'm going to have to move faster than normal. So you have to think like that. This is a business. Nobody's here to hold your hand. Nobody's here to develop you. Nobody's here to do that. Those days are gone. You have to put the work into yourself. You have to. So remember, when this is over, people are going to go to the well. When we say you go to the well, that means people who are tried and true. You want to be amongst those tried and true, or you want to be the newcomer that's like, hey, uh, you might not know who I am, but I'm ready to go. What do you need? I know I'm making all my students have everything in place. I'm pushing them because I don't want them to have excuses when this is over. So that's what I would encourage to you actors is like use this time to do your research, to work on yourself, to put everything in place. Also use this time to start looking for a side hustle. If this has taught us anything, you cannot expect your revenue just to come from one source. You cannot. So you have to also utilize this time to start thinking of other 
businesses. So I really want to encourage everybody that this downtime really could be a blessing depending on how you utilize it. Now, I know financially can be hard for people, but you have to kind of look at it with different eyes. Like right now, you probably can reach out to anybody and they'll respond. Mm -hmm. There's never a time where everybody is sitting still. Very rare. Mm -hmm. You have 80% of the country sitting still. So this is a time you can really start attacking and put together your target list of people you want to work with, your target list of casting directors that you want to introduce yourself to. Mm -hmm. Start reaching out to them. Don't wait until this is over. Reach out to them now. Right. They're not doing anything. Yeah. Very, very well said. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Like, that was so good. I received that. I hear that. Um, One last time, can you tell people where they can sign up for your online school? Yes. You can go to my profile page on Instagram, which is at Miss Angela White, or you can go to my website, www.missangelawhite.com. Just click on Backstage Pass, and it'll take you to all the programs. If you go to my Instagram page, just go to my profile. There's a link tree, link there, and they're all listed. So um, the easiest, or you can just Google. You can Google also Backstage Pass, and it'll take you to my website. And that's where they can find some of the programs. My book is on pre-order, and that's also on my website, um, right on the homepage. And you will see soon probably some ads to the uh, pre to pre-order. The book will be out creating the secret to creating a winning demo reel mm-hmm. will be out on April 15th. And I also have a free ebook mm-hmm. on my website on marketing and that's how to build your brand. And that's free. It's only like 20 pages and you can go to my website on every single page at the bottom. There's a freebie and same with Instagram. You call my profile. I have three freebies. I have a demo starter kit. I have audition techniques mm-hmm. And then I also have How to Build Your Brand, uh, a mini ebook on 10 essential tips you need for marketing. So we also try to give people things for free just to help jumpstart you. Yes, definitely. Well, that is appreciated. Angela, thank you so much for being on the Actors Lounge. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mel. Appreciate you. And God bless you. All right. Have a good one. Okay, you too.